So Coligo HCM is the sort of first international multi-center real world study of MAVA Campton, which is myosin inhibition in patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Nearly 280 patients were treated across four continents. Um, and the findings were very, very clear. Uh, we noted consistent and durable reductions in the left ventricular outflow tract gradients, improvements in the NYHA class, and a favorable safety profile. By week 36, a high proportion of patients achieved resting gradients less than 30 millimeter and Valsalva gradients less than 50 millimeter. And these improvements were sustained through nearly two years, which strongly supports the long-term utility of myosin innovation using Mavacampton in routine care. Yeah, this is a very important question because what it really suggests is that we may be able to simplify treatment regimen for these patients without, you know, compromising their outcomes. So in the Coligo at CM, we noted that about a quarter of patients discontinued at least one background therapy and more of many more of these patients reduced their dosages. So in practice, that would, you can imagine that would mean fewer medications, fewer side effects potentially better functional capacity. It also sort of emphasizes the need to actively reassess background regimens as patients respond to myosin inhibition using Mavacampton. And this has been recently tested in large randomized controlled trials um, using the second iteration of myosin inhibition. And the data was presented at European Society of Cardiology meeting. Yeah, uh, again, th thank you. This is interesting because Coligo HCM showed that across the racial, ethnic, and regional lines across the geographical regions, uh, patients consistently responded to myosin inhibition using Mavacampton. Some of these patients were underrepresented in large clinical trials, like Explorer HCM had about 1% of population that was blacks, and in Coligo HCM, we had 23% of black population. So Coligo challenges the one size, one size fits all approach and it sort of broadens the scope of what should be second line um, and what should be first line. Uh, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers currently in the guidelines, they are first line, but when patients continue to have symptoms or elevated gradients and myosin innovation using Mavacampton is getting considered, uh, but this should be done sooner rather than later and this, this is regardless of their demographic background. Yes, so again, uh, uh, very interesting because historically what we have lived with is just aiming for stabilization in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients. Now with data like Coligo, which is real world data spanning across the continent, we can aim higher. You know, nearly 60%, as you said, improved, improved at least one NYHA class by week 24, and another third of them reached class one. So this is not just symptom management. It is functional restoration for these patients. It's time to recalibrate our scales, time to recalibrate and think what we define as successful therapy in obstructive HCM. Yes, so this is a very compelling idea. Um, you know, both in Coligo and in our own center in the inherited practice at UAB, we have noticed improvement in gradients and symptoms and they weren't just achieved, but they were maintained, right? So th this, this suggests that there is potential for altering the course of the disease and not just managing symptoms. So, so if you were to truly answer the question, uh, you need longer term data on outcomes like remodeling. Uh, like LV regression, regression of the thickness, so to speak. So there is some single center stuff, including from our center that, that has shown this. And then, uh, you know, outcomes like arrhythmias uh, and, and mortality. So we recently published improved survival using real world data with myosin innovation using Mavacampton. So, so the idea is that myosin innovation is moving the needle towards viewing uh, 
this as a potential disease modifying therapy and not just the gradient centric approach that we live in. Yeah, again, a very good question. The 96 week data is very reassuring. Uh, you know, we notice sustained benefits, minimal LBEF reductions, and very few discontinuations due to systolic dysfunction. In, a, in United States, that is also due to uh, the protocol, the REMS protocol that is in place where uh, patients are monitored using serial echocardiograms. Now, but we still have open-ended questions. Uh, is this a, truly a disease-modifying therapy? What is going to be the long-term impact on regression of hypertrophy? What is going to be impact of, let's, let's say, on atrial fibrillation burden? Will it affect sudden cardiac death? or need for ICTs, which is a very important sort of area to address. And, you know, one could think of, again, single center uh, studies emerging um, and showing reduction in the Holter output with uh, non-sustained VTs or PVCs and, you know, modifying the risk calculators used for ICD implantation. And, and, and lastly, you know, what about your younger HCM patients? Younger HCM is a different population, you know, to have them get convinced to a therapy for lifelong therapy uh, in this case. Uh, yeah, so so we, we need to have that subgroup information to see how our, how is the remodeling happening in the younger hypertrophs. We are moving in the right direction, but what we need more studies. Yeah, this is close to our heart because uh, when we think of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we think of a team of providers. Uh, you know, the care is inherently team-based and, and now it has become more important than ever. So if you think of imaging doctors, uh, you also think of sonographers who, who obtain those provoked gradients um, accurately to titrate the myosin inhibition. When, when patients are started on it to sort of guide the monitoring. You think of our electrophysiology colleagues who manage arrhythmias and ICDs, and then you, you think of our general cardiologists in the community who, who sort of drive this uh, therapy. So, so now the, the, the treatment options are there. Uh, the collaboration piece has to sort of deepen. Now, this, this goes into the question of whether there should be HCM centers of excellence or should the care be spread across out in the community and and where does the primary care fit in so primary care plays a key role in managing comorbidity burden so when we think of hcm at our center at uab we also think of high comorbid condition burden that we see like hypertension and that is all the more important because your systolic dysfunction reduction or systolic dysfunction happening can be due to uncontrolled hypertension in an HCM patient. So, so Coligo shows that when specialized teams work together in these centers, even in diverse global settings, we can deliver safe, effective, and equitable care. No, I think the, the awareness of the disease uh, because of uh, diagnostics um, has gone up because we have the therapeutics to offer our patients. Now, there is a very important piece that we have not discussed, which is the cascade screening in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So our clinic is based on, you know, you have a patient which we say as a proband, then we you build a three-generation family tree, you bring the family members who may or may not have expressed themselves in terms of thickness or symptoms. And how do you really take that family-based approach and prevent sudden cardiac death in young people where uh, HCM plays a role. So, so I think genetic counseling, genetics and genetic counselors have a large role to play in, the, in that regard.